Hey guys, it's Julie and today is another thrift to treasure video where I take four items and upcycle them to something that is more my style for resale or to keep for myself. So it's the beginning of the year and I've been also working on projects for myself. Like in last week's video, if you haven't watched it, I worked on two projects in my hallway. Today I want to tackle this foyer. I've already started taking my Christmas decorations down. So now it needs to be refreshed for year round or spring. I had like a little bit of spring into my decor, but usually after Christmas, I am over decorating and I like to keep it year round. I don't do Valentine's Day or anything like that. Um, I never have. And also I'm in Louisiana and we have Mardi Gras uh, in February instead of Valentine's Day. And if y'all don't know what that is, it's super fun. It involves like the most yummy dessert ever, king cake. Oh my God. You know what I'm talking about if you had king cake. And unfortunately this year, there's not going to be any parades or anything like that. I would have totally found it and showed y'all all about Mardi Gras. I'll add some pictures of the baby last year at Mardi Gras because it's just too cute not to share. Um, hopefully next year we'll get back into the normal groove and we'll have Mardi Gras. Anyway, my point is if, if I would decorate for another holiday next, it would probably be Mardi Gras, not Valentine's Day. I keep my decor pretty year round. So the two projects I want to do for my hallway is this bench right here. I had it since we first bought this house and I've always wanted to refinish it and I never did. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to keep the legs black, but I want to sand down the top and see what it looks like, get that stain off of there. So I don't know, that one might kind of evolve. We'll see how that goes. And then I want to make, I've been having this idea in my head for like weeks now, like this long uh, lumbar pillow with some floral and stuff. So I think it's going to be amazing, but I don't know because as usual, I've never done it before. So we're going to try that and see how it turns out. So that's the two projects for my foyer. And I picked up these frames that are so gorgeous. Look how good this looks in my house. I love these. I looked everywhere to find a spot to keep these in my house and I just don't have one. So I'm going to have to sell these. And I'm going to show y'all a really cheap, easy way to add artwork to your frames, either for your house or if you have a booth, because I do think frames sell better if they have a mat and a picture and everything in them. So we're going to do that so y'all can see how I, this is also how I mat all the frames in my house. Um, I hate pictures without a mat. I think all pictures, all artwork need a mat. It just totally elevates the look of it and then the last project we're going to work on is something that i did last week so i misspelled um a word on my sign and now i can't live in ignorance anymore since like 300 of y'all have let me know that i misspelled this word y'all i am like literally the most awful speller like it is bad i can't even spell a word close enough for my phone to like pick it up and then Google can't understand my accent so I can't talk to the phone either and let it tell me how to spell something it's just like it's bad it's bad 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 <laughs> but it's okay I'm gonna show y'all if you misspell a word or if you mess something up it is really easy to go ahead and fix it and if I don't do it on this video I probably will never fix it <laughs> so we're gonna do that today so I hope y'all enjoy these projects and let's go ahead and get started. To create an inexpensive, simple piece of artwork for this frame, what I did was I Googled vintage botanical prints and then I just found some that I liked and printed them out on cardstock paper that you can get from Walmart or anywhere else. Now you can take any kind of paint and turn it into a watercolor. You can also skip this step as well if you just wanted the black and white print, but I just want to take it up a notch. So I'm just using some paint I have and I'm simply dipping my brush in water, dipping it in paint, and then painting the leaves and the flowers on this piece. Now to make this cost effective, if this was something you were going to sell, I would print out a bunch of these at one time and just go ahead and paint a lot of them. That way you have stock of them to put in your frames once you buy them. I feel like if you have a print in your frame, you'll be able to ask more money for it than if you were just selling the frame by itself. Now also what I do when I find vintage books 
is I look through the pages for some really pretty prints. And so like around my house, I have some of these prints that I've taken out of old books and they look absolutely beautiful, but they were too large for these particular frames. Now to create the mat, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a piece of cardstock. There's a particular paper that I like at Hobby Lobby, like the textured paper in the scrapbooking section. Um, it comes in white and cream. Unfortunately, I don't have any of that on hand. You could also use poster board and cut that down. You just need something thick, something like cardstock or poster board will work for this. So I use the glass to create a template and I'm just cutting it out. Uh, my cardstock out to the same size as my piece of glass. Now I need to cut the middle. So my print is four by six. So I need to cut out a window that is four by six. So I'm marking two inches from each side of the paper and drawing a line. And then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife. I'm using an X-Acto knife and this is a metal cork back ruler and you want to cut towards the inside of your mat. That way, if your X-Acto knife kind of goes crazy, you're cutting the inside of your mat that's getting taken out anyway, instead of the outside, which is the part that you're keeping. Okay, this was a rookie mistake. I cut my pictures way too small. You don't want them to be exactly four by six because then it's hard to fit in the mat. So just make sure you kind of have like, bigger area to work with than what I did. Mine fit like just barely. I'm using masking tape to attach my print to the mat. And then next, I'm just going to double side my masking tape just by folding it over. And I'm going to attach my mat and the picture to the piece that was on the back of the frame. Since this piece fits perfectly in the frame, you definitely don't want to throw that out. Keep that piece in case you need it later on. And now I'm gonna put the whole thing back together and it's ready to go up on the wall. First, I'm going to lightly sand down just the part of the sign that I want to fix. That way I don't have to do as many coats of paint if I can get some of this paint marker off. And then I'm just going to clean it up with a damp rag. Now you want to go back with very light coats of paint. If you go thick on here, you'll be able to see a big difference and you don't want that. So light coats of paint. And then I printed out the correctly spelled sign and I'm just tracing over with my carbon paper and a pencil. That's gonna give me an outline so I can go back with my paint pen and correctly do this sign. Now, if you want a more detailed description on how I made the sign, go check out my video last week. I will put it in the description below. For this project, I'm actually using a piece of batting from an old head pillow that I had in my closet. I just cut it down to more of a lumbar size instead of like a head pillow. And since I already have a piece of batting that I'm working with, I measured it and I'm cutting out my drop cloth to size. I'm trying to cut it as straight as possible. This drop cloth is from Harbor Freight. That's my favorite place to get drop cloth. And then I'm just hot gluing the edges together. So you wanna hot glue three edges together. I'm using Gorilla Brand Glue glue sticks. And then you want to stuff the edges. So I'm just adding a little extra stuffing into the corners of this piece. And then I'm sticking my bigger piece in. It took, 
it took a little more muscle than I thought to get this piece in, but I got it in there. And then I just want to add a little extra batting to the back. So I'm just kind of pulling apart the extra that I have left and just sticking it into the back. This is personal preference, however you want to do it. And then I'm going to, my last edge that needs to be glued, I'm going to glue the corners first. And then I'm also going to stick a little bit of extra batting into those corners. And um, once this is hot glued, it's done. So you just want to make sure it looks the way that you want it to look before you seal up that last edge. So I'm just sticking a little batting into the corners and then I'm going to seal it up using my hot glue gun. Okay, next I'm using some ribbon. I'm pretty sure this is from Hobby Lobby. I like it because it's almost the same color as my drop cloth, but it has the stitching on the edge. And that's what I really wanted was the stitching on the edge. So I'm cutting nine five inch pieces of ribbon. And then on one side, I'm just folding it over to give it a nice edge, a nice clean edge. Just on one side, we'll do the other side later. Now I'm gonna find the center of my pillow. And I'm just trying to like, trying to figure out placement of where I want this to be on my pillow. Um, and then I'm gonna glue it down. First the bottom. And then I'm going to glue the edges, but not all the way to the top. You want to keep that top part unglued about an inch or so, and we'll go back later and get that done. Right now, I just want to try to make sure and get all my pieces even at the bottom. That's what we're concentrating is getting these pieces even. And we're going to glue all nine of these pieces. I want the ribbon on the pillow to only be four inches tall. So I measured four inches and then I am folding over that seam at the top to create a nice hem, just hot gluing the edges. And now I'm gonna hot glue the edges of the top part back onto the pillow. And you're gonna do this for all of them. I think this was the easiest way to make sure that they were all exactly straight across. And make sure you are just gluing the edges down because what you want to create is like a little pocket. That's what we're creating here, little pockets. And then I found this gorgeous floral at the Dollar Tree and I'm just cutting off simply one stem. So you want to pick nine stems. I already kind of got them laid out how I want them. And then um, I want to add like a little bit of batting to these pockets just to make them a little bit more 3D. So I'm just adding like the tiniest bit of batting to these and then you're going to come back and you're going to add one sprig of floral. I was stressing the whole time I was doing this because I just wasn't sure if it was going to come out the way that I envisioned. But y'all, I am obsessed with this pillow. It came out exactly, exactly like I wanted it to. I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue to my greenery just to keep it in place. We're not doing a major overhaul to this piece. I just wanna change a few things on this bench. The first thing I need to do is sand down the top. I'm using a very high grit sandpaper to start off with. I think I'm using about a 100 grit sandpaper and then I'm gonna change it out for a smoother grit sandpaper, like a 220. And this just makes the process a lot easier of sanding down this top. And then I also decided I was gonna go ahead and distress the black on this piece just to give it a little bit of a different look. And then on the top, I'm gonna use my Waverly Antiquing Wax mixture. 
It's mixed with water and I'm just gonna put it over the top. So you can make this darker if you want. What I did was I went light at first, let it dry, see if I liked it, and then I ended up putting a second coat on. So it will get darker the more coats you put on it. You just wanna make sure to let it dry first and then do nice, even, long strokes. On days like this, I'm glad to have a YouTube channel that forces me to get out and work because it was so cold in the workshop. Okay, this is a technique that I saw Ginger Chick do and I tried it and I absolutely love it, y'all. So you're gonna use the antiquing wax. You're not watering it down. You're using it at full um, strength and you're just gonna brush it on your piece all the black and then you're gonna take a paper towel and you're gonna wipe it off and it just gives this black this beautiful rich look it reminds me a lot of my uh, bed in my master bedroom that I love it has a lot of black in it but it also has a lot of brown and the more tones you can get out of your piece I just find the the more expensive it looks and you know we all about a look for less we want something cheap but we want to make it look really expensive I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Please leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite project that I worked on today.